Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. It is a cold and nasty, rainy Texas day here, and I figured why not let's have some fun. I'm going to skip off of the engine lathe series just for one video here and give you something that you can throw together in your shop. It's a fun little thing to have. And if you like what you see, if you enjoyed this video, and if it's something you're going to make for yourself or somebody else, hit that subscribe button on the way out and help me grow this channel. Let's have some fun. I'm going to start the build with a piece of half inch 6061 aluminum. I'm going to make a little knurled thumb wheel out of this, about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. That's about 10 millimeters. Not precision. Anything about this is just winging it. Go visually to your liking. Secret to a good knurl is a good, heavy, high pressure bite. First off, get it to track, and then you can adjust the tension as you see fit. I'll get the glare off of that in a second. I'm going to put a 1032 thread through the center of this. It's about a five millimeter screw. And the secret to a good power tap is to not torque down on the tailstock. Crank it in and crank it back out. And if there's any mismatch in the feed, the tailstock will move and you won't destroy your thread. I'm going to face it back off because the pressure from the knurl is going to distort it. Superficial plunge cut with a parting tool and a chamfer on either side, and then we part it off. Call this one done. Next piece in line is 3 16 diameter. This is 17 4 stainless, and I'm going to put a 1032 thread on here for about 5 eighths of an inch. That 1032 thread is about a 5 millimeter fine thread. And a 303 or 1018 would probably work much better. When you deburr this, make sure you deburr it with a file because it's going to raise up and exceed the major diameter. And when you deburr it with emery, make sure you go forward and backwards and take a dead pass after you're done. Get your little wheel to fit on there. Comfortably fit on there. No precision necessary. Get it to slide on, slide back off. And you're done. Without a doubt, my career nemesis and my least favorite part of this job is bending anything. I can't stand it. Got to bend this to 180 degrees around. Let's start to bend just outside where the thread is. I have two sandwiched pieces of aluminum here with a shim in between. A little bit bigger than the rod, so I can stick the rod in here, use that one as a stop, and bend it around. Use plenty of heat, because if you don't, it's going to come out looking like this, and you're going to have to beat on it with a hammer and admit that it's not your forte. But for what it is, a little bit of character it gives it, so hang in there. Make sure your little piece fits on there nice. And I'm going to cut this off probably even with the thread on this side. It can be adjusted after the fact, but make sure you have it nice up and over. Okay, the size of this lock is entirely up to you. I'm going to use 3 8 brass. That's about 10 millimeter thick brass. And this is completely visual, this job. So however that little hasp comes out that you just bent up, visually position that on your chunk. Lay it out with a Sharpie marker. Figure out where you want everything to sit and size it accordingly. Square it up to the size you want, and then we're going to pop a couple holes in it. One goes all the way through, and one is very superficial.
An excellent trick for figuring out center to center on anything is to measure the OD of your part and zero your calipers while you're holding the part. That way when you measure outside it'll give you a center to center. And to visually double check it, re-zero the calipers, open up to approximately what you just measured and lay your calipers on there and go, yep, that's what I was looking for. And this is the superficial spot face with an end mill for the opposite short side of the bent hasp. Next step is to cut a little slot in the side so that your knurled thumb wheel that you made initially fits right in there comfortably. You want it to move around just a little side to side. Precision fit is not suggested here because this is a moving working part. You want to make sure that you have enough clearance for it to flop side to side a little bit and that when the threaded rod from the part the, from the bent part passes through this that this little wheel here turns easily and doesn't have any interference whatsoever. When it spins easily and you can fit the hasp in there and everything threads together, call it a day. The final shape and cosmetic finishing of this particular part is entirely up to you. For this particular lock, I put a little bit of a round edge on the outer edges and left everything else square. And yeah, it just got hot, so I had to go and dunk it in some water. Believe me, that's brass on a belt sander is a cruel thing. Once you've got your net shape all figured out, I took it over to my scotch Bright wheel, took all the ugly edges off, and finished it off by rubbing it on some 240 emery on my bandsaw table. Next steps to put it together. This is a fun little project. It's only got a couple of pieces. Shouldn't take you more than a couple hours if it's the first time you did it. Don't worry about messing it up. They just get better as they get older. This is something you'll have hanging around for a long time. I know I've got several of these hanging on my key hook at my shop and my house. And this is actually the first one I've ever done in brass. Usually they're completely aluminum. But the stainless steel makes for a good upper. Do yourself a favor and use 303. Don't use heat treatable stainless. It gets tough to work with when you fire up a torch and hit it. Simple design. Definitely not something you want to use for high security, but it's a fun little keychain and it's a nice little gift. I do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Joe Pizinski at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Stay well. See you again. And hit that subscribe button on the way out. Let's blow these numbers up. Thank you. See you. Bye.